everyone, and welcome to Skate 3 Arena in Tingsboro. It is March 2nd of 2018. We got a playoff game. The Bishop Girton Girls High School team will be hoisting Oyster River Portsmouth, a team they lost to during the regular season, Tom. 6 5 John again, it was back and forth. The game that Scott Season, the Girton coach, said was not goaltender Abby Hool's best game. So that's interesting in enough that if she plays really well, they have a good chance to beat this team. They're pretty evenly matched. It was a back and forth game. PG 13 and five, number four. Oyster River Portsmouth 12 and five, number five. Playing that, that one less win means they had to come here. That doesn't seem fair in a way. They scheduled 17. There were no postponements on the, on the list. So that's the way it is in girls hockey. You get what you can grab. Meanwhile, It'll be interesting to see what Kurt does in this game, John. We, they, their girl, I thought watching them a couple times this year, they're two key players, Ashley Killen and Lindsey Hope. Ashley Killen will not play tonight. She's got a bad knee. She's been back and forth, up and down in the lineup all year with that knee. She will not be able to go tonight. They are going to heavily rely on Lindsey Hope for their scoring. That's going to be tough. I went to the Bruins-Penguins game last night. There was eight goals in the first period. I don't think you're going to see that tonight. Uh, I hope not because I'm keeping track of the score that's for right. somebody. And uh, that's going to be tough. But we'll see what the scoring is like. Uh, the two teams, as you just pointed out, pretty evenly matched. The grand prize for winning this game, Tom, is really no picnic. It's going to go to Plymouth State right. on and Tuesday play. night after school and, and play. play Exeter, which beat Cochran today 6-0 six nothing, six in their nothing earlier. Final. Right. right. And yeah. Curtin against Exeter this year, if my memory serves me correct, 11-0 and 13-0. Losses. Yikes, yes. So not uh, good. Yeah. Not but good. That said, all we have to do is worry about this game right now tonight. That's right. It would be a feat for this team to make the semis. I think they haven't been to the semis in about five years, if memory serves me correctly. I think the last time we did a BG Girls tournament game was their quarterfinal game right here. And they won it and they vaulted into the semifinals, which used to be up in Concord. Now they're at Bloody State. That's so. Tom King. I'm John Collins, our cameraman Tim O'Neill. We've got an exciting hockey game just moments away here on Nashua TV. Stay with us. Disasters can happen anywhere at any time. When disaster hits home, your family will depend on you. In a disaster, you are the superhero. Be prepared. Sign up for emergency alerts and visit readynh.gov. Take action. Be safe. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Skate 3 Arena in Tingsboro. Scene of tonight's high school playoff game. It's the Bishop Girton girls high hockey team, the Cardinals, hosting the Portsmouth Oyster River Bobcats. These two teams pretty evenly matched on paper, as we mentioned. They met once during the regular season. Oyster River Portsmouth actually took that game by a goal, 6-5 to five back in January. This Oyster River Portsmouth team started off the first five games of the season with a record of two wins against three losses. But then they turned things around with an eight-game winning streak. And one of those eight wins in a row was against this BG team, a game in which the BG head coach, quoted by Tom King, said that it was not goaltender Abby Uhl's best game. Abby Uhl's an excellent goaltender, senior from Litchfield, New Hampshire. She can come up, she can pitch a shutout on any given night. I don't know if this will be the one. This is a pretty talented Oyster River team, but you never know. Scott Cizek telling uh, Tom King that Abby could play better against these Bobcats, and if she does, it might turn that earlier season result around. It is a Friday evening, March 2 of 2018. Not a school night, however. This was a New Hampshire school vacation week. It was the day of the Nor'easter, which seemed to have struck Boston particularly hard. There were flooded streets down near the New England Aquarium, down near the harbor, and in the Quincy, the, the shoreline 
communities especially. New Hampshire did feel some of the win but not quite the brunt. So we, this game was not even close to being postponed. We are underway. BG, of course, in the Green Bay Packers color scheme, the white jerseys with the gold and green, and a hit from behind. There's no checking in girls' ice hockey, so that's going to be whistled as soon as BG's uh, Annalise Reed sophomore defenseman touches the puck. The penalty is uh, going to go against number 17 for Bishop Gurdon, Lindsay Halt, who is their freshman forward there, talented scorer from Nashua, New Hampshire will go to the box for an illegal hit from behind just a few seconds, a half a minute into the game. 15 minute periods in New Hampshire high school boys and girls hockey. So the Bobcats will have their first power play of the evening. This is a 7 p.m. start here on a Friday night. Pretty decent crowd on hand. Some still are filing in as the Bobcats set up their power play. They're in tight. Missed opportunity there. There's a backhander. Abby Uhl shuts it down. Right in front of the goal was Ali Marshall, junior forward for Oyster River that was all by herself in front of the BG goaltender, but she kind of just tossed it right into the emblem, the chest area of Abby Uhl, and it was a pretty easy save, I think she'd tell you. BG has to worry about the Bobcats moving the goaltender side to side and coming up with those one-timers. That's the kind of goal that you'll need to beat Abby Uhl when she's at her best. Of course, no icing because BG's on the penalty kill here for another minute and 20 as the Bobcats come out of their own end. They bobble that pass, but they regain possession and throw it into the Cardinal zone where it's promptly thrown right back out. Nice defensive work by Annalise Reed. Sophomore defenseman from Pelham wears number two. She'll be logging a lot of minutes. Interesting looking at the roster as the BG Cardinals manage to clear it down ice. Under a minute now left to go on the penalty kill for the Cardinals. There is no icing, they say, on that rink length pass. It ends up on an Oyster River stick. Deflection, loose puck, shot on goal. Abby Uhl's going to glove that and hang on. Base off to her left. Interesting looking at the BG roster that there's only two full-time defensemen listed. That's Annalise Reed, number two, and Allie McMahon, number four. And then two part-time defensemen, McKenna Leeser and really Riley Morris, and that's it. Shot toward the goal is deflected away by defenseman Allie McMahon, number four, camped out in front. And again, that hits Allie's boot, and she kicks it away. Annalise Reed's going to carry this puck out with half a minute left to go on the penalty kill, taken away by Oyster River's Julia Ravenel. A senior defenseman stepping up and putting the pressure on by getting it into the Cardinals zone with 14 seconds now left to go on the power play for the Bobcats. Good stick handling. Ravenel closing in on the near corner. Shot it off the apron of the net, however. It wasn't on goal. Through the crease that pass goes out of the box comes Lindsay Halt. So it's five on five again. They'll wave off the icing as they never reached the goal line before the Oyster River Portsmouth defenseman caught up to it. Stick handling. Reed broken up as she goes over the blue line. And now it's one of the captains for Oyster River. Julia Ravenel with the puck. She goes deep into the corner with it. We've played three full minutes. No score yet here at Skate 3. This is a playoff game in the single elimination New Hampshire Girls Division I hockey tournament. Coming out of the corner, Ravenel. Great pass across the crease. She's trying to hit Anna Maza, her teammate on the line there and if she had Mazza had got a stick on that it would have been a wide open net on the far side instead not even a shot on goal for Oyster River but clearly they have been dominating the play here early Lindsay Halt is on it Lindsay Halt got penalized a half a minute in and BG managed to kill that off Halt going deep into the corner broken up centering pass shot toward the goal but not on net great opportunity set up by the hustle of Lindsay Halt into the corner as she centered it out to Brianna DeFelice, number eight, but she wasn't able to square it up on goal. Goaltender for Oyster River is a sophomore, Sally Squire. She's listed as number 25 on our program. She's actually number 35 in between the posts for Oyster River Portsmouth. Has not yet been tested by the BG offense. We played four minutes of the first period and no score. 
Deflected shot, doesn't make its way through to the low slot before Oyster River Portsmouth collects it. And sprinting over the blue line, Tori Libel, a junior defenseman, shot on goal. Abby Hull shuts down the near side and hangs on. Face off to her right. There have been several face offs in the BG zone here early. None yet on the Bobcats' end of the rink. Oyster River Portsmouth, a combination team. There are multiple combination high school hockey teams in New Hampshire in the boys' and girls' ranks. Of course, uh, hockey costs a lot of money, and you don't always get a lot of kids to turn out for the team. So just the economics dictated that they had to go to multiple uh, combination school teams in recent years. Good work by a strong skater behind the net for Oyster River. That is Tori Leitz, a strong skating junior forward number 16, putting the pressure on almost all by herself down there before BG intercepts. Ravenel stick handling in front. Ashley Cruz by the goal before she got a shot away that didn't make it through to Abby Uhl, the BG goaltender, although she was ready for it. It hit a couple of uh, sticks and a skate intercepted by BG. Sprinting down to get it now is Emma Wallet, number 11. We've seen her score some goals earlier in the season. Annie Reed with it. Shoots it down behind the Oyster River net. Under 10 minutes left to go. First period. We played five full. No score here in Tingsboro. Annalise Reed going back to get it. It's a foot race as she is able to beat Anna Mazza to the puck. Shuts it off the high the side boards. And Abby Ewell shuts it down. Good thing there were two Bobcats right on the doorstep. Ready to pounce on any loose puck. So another faceoff in the BG zone. This one to the left of Abby Uhl. 9.28 to go. First period. Bobcats won the first game 6-5. We In January, we are scoreless so far here in this playoff game. The winner will move along to play Exeter. The Blue Hawks played their playoff game against Concord earlier today and won 6-5 to nothing, an impressive fashion in Exeter. Shot toward the goal, goes off the left apron. Oyster River Portsmouth collects, and they work it out of their zone smartly, but the deflection goes on to the stick of BG defenseman Annalise Reed. She gets it up ahead, trying to stick handle through traffic. Was Brianna DeFelice broken up all the way back to the BG defensive line? They throw it on in head. Some neutral zone turnovers here or, or changing of possession. First back to get it for the Cardinals is Lindsay Hulk. Good skater. Off the boards. Nicely done. Pass to Molly Blast. Blast gets it on ahead to Brooke Brudy, but it's behind her. Brooke, one of about a handful of Nashua players on this BG roster. Brooke, a senior from Nashua, throws a lob pass in on the a lob shot in, I should say, on goal. It was handled, but now we've got a partial two-on-one here. It is uh, a player getting back low for BG. Deflected and into the goal. Chopping it over the sprawled out body of Abby Uhl, the Oyster River player following the play on the left wing, able to kind of just chip it over the BG goaltender for the game's first goal. At the 8-13 mark remaining in the first period, we will uh, wait the... the the number, the uniform number on that, who got the goal for Oyster River. 1-0, the Bobcats lead it. An effective rush. It was kind of an ugly-looking initial shot, but it was on edge. It was a bouncing puck, and Oyster River used that. Allie Marshall with the goal. So one nothing Oyster River leads it. Tricky shot for Abby Uhl to handle there. Nothing uh, routine about that. As the puck was bouncing and it wasn't a shot that you could practice too often. It's kind of like a, a chip shot. When you're down low, it's it's perfectly done by the Oyster River forward, Ali Marshall. Making a one-nothing lead. 
Bobcats continue with the pressure. A wrister goes by the goal off the glass and ricochets near boards. Fought for Annalise Reed, who's had a lot of touches for BG, battling for the loose puck in the corner against forward Laura Drehe, number five for Oyster River. Partial two on one now. Here's Lindsay Hult. She's going to take it wide to the right, swinging behind the goal. Hult still has it, tries to throw it off the back of the goaltender and in. But Sally Squire, squatting near post, gave nothing to shoot at. And now the Bobcats are on the attack again. A shot goes by the goal up to the right. Uh. Don't know if uh, Abby Ull got a glove on that. Oyster River again throwing it up past the outstretched glove of Abby Ull and BG having a difficult time keeping the puck out of their defensive zone. It's creating increasing numbers of chances for Oyster River Portsmouth. A blocked shot at the blue line. But somehow collecting is Tory Libel. Libel chopping at it. Still loose. Portsmouth. Oyster River keeping it alive. Near side, Abby Ewell saving it twice, thrice. And it's up in the air. She's gloving at it, and it's still loose. And now the referee lost sight of it. But I'll tell you what, that puck was never tied up. It just continued to be loose and available to the Bobcats to hack away. And Abby Ewell might have made a series of about five saves on that one attacking chance by the Bobcats. Disconcerting amount of pressure here against the BG Cardinals as they're seeking to advance to the semifinals with a win here at home. But Oyster River dominating the play early. Emma Wallet passing on the wing to Molly Blast, who is broken up. Now Molly Blast scoops it toward the net. Emma Wallet nearly had a chance for a turnaround shot. Molly Blast in her skates. Hacked away at by number 12, Patty Anderson gets the job done. She gets it to center. Broken up. Tori Lights, the center iceman for Oyster River, poking it ahead, but now broken up in near side battle for the puck. Ends up on the stick of Lindsay Hult. Around the boards it goes. First to get it, though, will be Oyster River. Pinching in, deep in the corner, Julia Rabinell puts the brakes on, comes out front, tried the wrap around to the far side and missed. What well, a great scoring chance for the Bobcats. They've had many. They lead it one to nothing on a goal that came about six and a half minutes into the first period by Allie Marshall for Oyster River Portsmouth. And the theme continues. Marathon possession in the offensive zone for Oyster River. Round the boards, collecting is Julia Ravenel still with it. Going by a couple of BG defenders before it's taken away by Allie McMahon. Taken back by Ravenel and she gets a shot away. Stick save and holding on Abby Uhl. And BG will get a much needed line change as those five skaters were out there for about at least one solid minute of pressure from Oyster River Portsmouth in their defensive zone. 4.06 remaining in the first period. Oyster River looking to double up on their score with a 1-0 lead. Bishop Gurton just looking for any kind of a squal quality scoring chance. And maybe the best chance is Emma Wallet, who puts it up the boards and chases after it. But Oyster River wins the foot race to get back, and they don't clear. Good. Hustled by Molly Blast, sophomore from Groton, Massachusetts. Number 15 throws it into the corner and goes in after it. Molly Blast working hard to get the loose puck if she can. Down to the ice goes number 13, Allison Pollard, working also for a rebound. Molly Blast on the far boards. Emma Wallet tried to get in the way of that one. And to center ice it comes on the stick of Anna Massa. M-A-Z-Z-A. And A.M. in the P.M. diving toward the goal with a shot on net that's steered away by Abby Ewell. Abby Ewell actually pushes at the Oyster River attacker and somehow out of that pile 
BG emerges with the puck. Good pass, cross ice. Emma Wallet on the pass from Brooke Gibruti. Wallet turning around, trying to retain possession, but it is taken away by a determined back checker for Oyster River Portsmouth. In on the goal, Abby Ewell with the save, and she hangs on. Great speed, Tori Lights, the junior forward, number 16 for Oyster River Portsmouth, showing herself to be one of the stronger skaters on the ice for either team. A player to watch, certainly. Tori Lights, number 16, taking the faceoff for Oyster River Portsmouth against Brianna DeFelice. Shot down into the corner with it. Allie Marshall, the goal scorer for Portsmouth Oyster River. In front, pass up in the air, and a nice hand-eye coordination save by Abby Ewell as the initial save was made, and the puck went straight up in front of her like a Pop-Tart out of the toaster, and she was able to just calmly glove it with the basket catch to freeze the puck for another face-off, however, in the BG defensive zone. Two and a half minutes to go first period. And another glove save by Abby Uhl. She has been excellent in this first period. She has got well over 10 saves, probably closer to 20 in this first period. Just an amazing onslaught of pressure. Offensive pressure by Oyster River Portsmouth in this first period. It is only a one goal game. E.G. needs to develop some sort of an offense. And it may start now. Good back check by Lindsay Halt. She shoots it behind the goal. And now the pursuit, breaking up the clearing pass. Brooke Yabruti got in there deep. In front, Oyster River, though, first to the puck again. And look out, Tori Lights has it. She's going to skate by everybody. Tori Lights, breakaway, one-on-one, shot goal, 2 nothing. Oyster River Portsmouth with 157 remaining in the first period. Tori Lights just outskated everybody to create the one-on-one -on -one breakaway on Abby Ewell, and she wristed it by her with that speed as her advantage. That may be an unassisted goal. We'll have to wait and see, but Tori Lights makes it a 2-0 Bobcat advantage. Just under two ticks remaining in the first period. Well, the goals are mirror images for Portsmouth Oyster River as Allie Marshall scored the first goal on an assist from Lights. Lights scored the second goal on an assist from Marshall. So that tandem has been effective for the Bobcats in the first period. 120 left to go and Portsmouth Oyster River looks like they're not done with their scoring chances here in the first. That shot is blocked by one of the defensemen for BG. Puck in tight. Abby Ewell just trying to clamp down on it and force another faceoff as she can. But meanwhile, the Bobcats keep alive. Looking for another shot on goal. Good stick work there by Brianna DeFelice for BG to intercept one of the Bobcat forwards. Under a minute to go, first period. Annalise Reed got a glove on that high pass or attempted shoot in. We have a penalty coming up against one of the Oyster River players, I believe. Or is it against, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Is it against BG? <clears throat> There are four skaters out there for Royster River at Portsmouth and five for Bishop Girton. So I would imagine the penalty has gone against the Bobcats and we're still waiting to see who is going to serve it because nobody's gone to the box yet. It may be too many players on the ice. I'm not sure. Now we have a player going to serve the penalty and that will be uh, somebody from the bench with his number 15 that I don't have their name on my Oyster River Portsmouth roster. So it's a penalty against the team that is up by two goals. Oyster River Portsmouth serving two minutes for, I'm going to guess, too many players on the ice at one time. A takeaway on the penalty kill. Tory Lights shot goal, a save by the goaltender. 
Abby Ewell right into her chest. She had great position on that shot by Lights, who was looking for goal number three. Too many players on the ice was the penalty. 20 seconds left to go in the period. Unfortunately for Bishop Girton, the only shot so far in their power play has been the, by the shorthanded Bobcats, who lead it two to nothing. Trying to fetch the puck in the corner, and maybe just freeze it, hold on to it. There's only five seconds left to go. And another shot on goal. Just for kicks for Portsmouth Oyster River. They end the period shorthanded, but with putting offensive pressure on. So a tremendous period for the visiting team here in this playoff game at Skate 3. It's Portsmouth Oyster River 2 and Bishop Girton nothing as we go to the first intermission and head toward the second period. It's a single elimination playoff game. Stay with us. John Collins with Tom King and cameraman Tim O'Neill. We've got more exciting action coming up on Nashua ETV. I took my first handful of pills and that's when all my priorities seemed to change. He would ask to use the bathroom in other people's homes. He just assumed that they would have medication. He'd go in their medicine cabinets and steal prescription drugs. I wish I knew really what these prescription pills were. We were so naive about the whole drug thing. These are all synthetic forms of heroin. Keep your medication locked up because you'll never notice that a pill is gone. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Welcome back, everybody, to Skate 3 Arena in Tingsboro at scene of tonight's girls' high school hockey playoff game on a March 2 of 2018. It's Bishop Girton hosting Portsmouth Oyster River, and the Bobcats of Portsmouth Oyster River actually enjoy a 2-0 lead as we begin the second period with BG on the power play, though, because of too many players on the ice penalty against the Bobcats nearing the end of the first period. A tandem of players for... The Bobcats, Ali Marshall and Tori Leitz accounting for the scoring as Marshall scored first about six and a half minutes into the game on an assist from Tori Leitz and then Leitz scored on a breakaway with two minutes left in the period on an assist from Ali Marshall. So great pressure have been, been put on by Oyster River Portsmouth in that first period. Abby Uhl, the BG goalie, stopped approximately 20 shots. There was one sequence when she stopped about five shots from in tight in a row to keep Portsmouth Oyster River from leading by much more than they already are. And Tori Leitz, who has got that great skating ability, nearly stole it and went in alone again. She's got it behind the goal. She tried to go off of the back of Abby Uhl, but Abby was carefully planted against that left pipe and there was no opening at all but it does effectively kill off much of what was remaining in the BG power play in fact there were three shots on goal for Oyster River Portsmouth in that power play uh, penalty kill and BG I don't think got any shots on goal at all during the two minutes which is now expired five on five Rister Abiul saves and hangs on Portsmouth Oyster River with several players that have had shots on goal. BG has had maybe the one shot on very lonely Bobcat goaltender Sally Squire. Centering pass taken away by BG's defenseman Brooke Yabruti, the freshman forward, uh, forward from uh, Nashua, shot goes by the goal. One of the best scoring chances, maybe the best for BG in the game, as Lindsay Halt wristed one by the cage. Now, Oyster River answering back. Shot blocked by Annalise Reed, number two, sophomore defenseman from Pelham for BG, was right in the way of that scoring attempt by the Bobcats. 15 minute periods in New Hampshire High School boys and girls hockey. We are couple minutes into this second period of play. Portsmouth Oyster River looking to add to their 2-0 lead. Now BG wants to cut it down to a one-goal game. Lindsay Hult tried the centering pass, went off the skate of a Bobcat defender, however. Stepping up at the blue line was Allie McMahon, who kicked it forward. Now with it is uh, Tori Leibel, number 13 for Portsmouth Oyster River. Two on one, that pass just ahead of the hustling Allison Pollard, or 
BG might have had their first breakaway of the game, breakaway scoring chance. Skating by everybody, one on one, in alone, shot saved by Abby Ohl as she shuts down the speed skating Tori Lights, who nearly had her second breakaway goal of the game. Tori Lights just is able to outskate everybody from a standing position in one spot. There's a pass in front shot goal. Tori Lights to Allie Marshall again. Those two players that have teamed up with 11.53 remaining in the second period. Those two players, Tori Lights and Allie Marshall, have accounted for all three of the Bobcat goals. There was nobody between Allie Marshall and Abby Uhl to stop that shot. Nice wrister over the glove side left pad of Abby Uhl for the game's third goal. BG trying to come up with their first score of the game, going on the offensive. Marshall from Lights, three minutes and seven seconds into the second period. A 3-0 Portsmouth Oyster River advantage. These two teams played in January. Portsmouth Oyster River won that game 6-5. This game has the feel of a game that will not be as close, perhaps. Bishop Girton missing a key player. Ashley Killen, number 10. Junior forward from Merrimack spotted on the bench for BG and unable to play and it's uh, it's been costly as they've missed her scoring touch. Around the boards it goes. BG with a shot and a glove save made by Sally Squire. Probably her most difficult chance of the game and that's good news for Oyster River Portsmouth as they have not been nearly tested as much on the defensive end as BG's goaltender Abby Uhl has, not nearly. Three nothing, the Bobcats lead it as they clear it out. It will not be icing. Back to get it is Brooke Yabruti. Puts the brakes on, eludes two four checkers, but a miscommunication there on the pass and Oyster River Portsmouth keeping the pressure on in the offensive zone. Loose puck picked up by Brookie Broody. Nice pass, tape to tape. Lindsay Hult up ahead. Lindsay's still with it. Going to try to skate by the defender. Lindsay Hult able to get by. Broken up, though, by the secondary defender, Tori Leibel, with a great play on the back end to prevent any kind of a shot on goal for the sprinting Lindsay Hult. It breaks up the Bobcat player at the red line, shoots it in, and BG will get a partial line change. Loose puck. Changes possession. Uh, uh, teams change possession, trade possession in the offensive zone for BG. They cannot get a shot away, however. Accidental collision at center ice. Good no call. There is no checking in girls high school hockey. And no checking in uh, Olympic hockey, as you may know from watching the Team USA women Olympic ice hockey team win gold in Pyeongchang, South Korea over Canada. What a tremendous game that was. The gold medal game that went to a shootout before the USA defeated Canada for their first goal since 1998. Remember New Hampshire women's ice hockey players on that 1998 gold medal winner, I do recall. Canada was on quite the uh, impressive four goal winning gold four goals winning streak before that game. BG doing better here in this second period but they need goals trailing three to nothing as Oyster River Portsmouth goes back to get it and a nice pass up ahead of the field to Ali Marshall the dangerous Ali Marshall is looking for a hat trick in this one. She's got two goals and an assist. It's figured in all three of the goals, as has Tori Lights, number 16. 
who's on the wing here. Two on one. Marshall goes wide. Shot toward the goal. She had thrown that puck behind her. It would have been another break in all alone for Tory Lights. Those two players more than BG has been able to handle so far in this game. Number 11 and 16 in the black and blue for Oyster River Portsmouth. Now here comes Emma Wallet. Emma Wallet with a head of steam going down the left wing deep to the boards. Takes the puck with her. Still has it. Emma Wallet has it taken away. And Oyster River Portsmouth breaking out. They got a person ahead of the field and not able to connect. This will be icing. Nice try. Anna Maza, number 23, nearly had a breakaway from the red line, but the pass just got ahead of her and went over the end line. Teams have gone to no touch icing in recent years. There was once upon a time where you had to go back and touch it first to get an icing call. Whereas that would not have been icing because clearly Maza would have got there first. But now that the puck goes across the line, it's no touch icing, as hockey fans well know by this time. That's going to go as a shot on goal. It's easily handled by Sally Squire. And nice pass clearing it out of the zone for Oyster River Portsmouth. Good poke check. Here's Emma Wallet with it. Poke check was by Lindsay Hult. And Oyster River Portsmouth. Trying to come out of their own zone. Good no call there as the player for BG had uh, Brianna DeFelice had her stick right on the puck as the Bobcat player went tumbling over the stick and the puck. So no tripping call. Seven minutes to go here. We are more than halfway through this playoff hockey game and Oyster River Portsmouth has owned the first half of this single elimination game leading three to nothing. That shot goes off the left apron as we look at the goal tended by Sally Squire for the Bobcats. Puck fought for near a far corner. E.G. kicking at it, but it's the Bobcats that come away with it. And Tori Leibel with a cross-ice pass trying to hit number it's 21. For the Bobcats, that would be Lily Poitras. Or, yeah, it's number 21, Poitras. Gets it back to the point. Libel trying to keep it in at the blue line. Halt nearly had a breakout down the right wing, but she got stopped, and teams trade possession in the neutral zone. Puck ends up behind the red goal line of BG, and it's an icing call against. Portsmouth Oyster River with exactly six minutes to go in the second period. The Bobcats still enjoying that three nothing lead. Well, John, you notice that there's only you know nine skaters for Bishop Girton. Yeah, that's rough numbers you wise. Know, rough numbers. They've got two players out, Killen, and also uh, Pearson, who is uh, away school vacation week, and field hockey is her main sport. And she's away at a. Abby Yule with two nice saves. Save the puck's there. still loose behind the net. Pool's, the whistle is blown. Poole's going to have to do a lot of work, John, because she's got... Puck know, wasn't loose. It was frozen underneath her. She's going to have to do a lot of work because Oyster River's... I got her with about 24 saves. Yeah. And that might be uh, underestimating the Oyster number. River's going to dominate in terms of time of possession. Yeah. It's been the Allie Marshall and Tori Leitz show for... Portsmouth Oyster River as they factored in all three goals. Marshall's got two of them. Lloyd likes the third, and they've assisted each other in those goals. There's a foot race. A few players go tumbling down. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, both John, for BG. We are now with 522 left in the second period. BG's not going to win too many more foot races. Their legs are going to be tired. With only nine players. And the, the last time when they, and it's, it was the same case when they played them at Oyster River. They tired out in the third period. They started off fast, but the Whittemore Center's Olympic sheet of ice will oh, tire yeah. you out if you're not playing, if you're not used to playing it. I saw that happen in Merrimack in the boys' hockey prelims just a few days ago. They were up 2 nothing, and then they just could not sustain it because they weren't used to playing with that length of uh, ice. How about that? You know? Yep. It's a huge advantage for these Oyster River teams. Emma Wallet trying to take it away. Puck at the uh, Oyster River player as she was coming over the boards onto the ice, and she was automatically 
offside here in the second period because of the long changes. You have your goalies on the opposite end. You know, it's just tough. You know, it's going to be tough for Gertner yeah. in, in this game. Yeah, you mentioned it really uh, is. Ashley Killen. That's a big loss. That's a that's a huge loss. Uh, we, we have some paperwork to do, I believe. Mr. Duprat may have to uh, wait just a second. We have to sign in. Oh. Because we're broadcasting. Can you sign me in? You know, I can sign you in. All right. Thank you. Where I'll do I sign the dotted line, Mr. Duprat? <laughs> Puck is shot into the Portsmouth Oyster River zone at the icing. He takes photos, he writes stories, he broadcasts games, and he signs people in. How's that, huh? I know it. Multi talented. Uh, Dress Nashua. Face off to the left of Abby Ull. Bobcats trying to add to their 3 0 lead. Tom signing away his house, on realizing it. That's right. <laughs> Sign here. <laughs> Puck fought for on the fire boards. Congratulations, Mr. Duprat. You now are the proud owner of Toyota Celica. 2000 that is probably in a scrap heap somewhere. Or, Congratulations. And or Tom King's autograph. Emma Wallet shot saved by Sally Squire. I had to sign a couple at the girls basketball game the other night. A national parent wanted a couple things autographed. Priceless. <laughs> you should. You should. Priceless as in sub penny. <laughs> oh no! I don't want to well, denigrate the autograph. Well, the bobblehead went down to five bucks on eBay oh, about three years ago. Oh, you saw it on eBay? Somebody did. That's nice to see anything of you on yes, eBay. Yes, and then it was bought. Then it was level Then it was in a dollar store. <laughs> that's at least D list when there's something of you on eBay. Three minutes to go, second period. Watch out, Abby oh, nice with a play. nice poke check save. Nice play by Hull. How about the skating ability of Lights, Tom? Uh, number well, 16. She's figured it all three goals, yeah. John, so it's it's really been, it, yeah. you know. She seems to be on another mother level and with don't those. forget, you know, they, they, not only do they have more players on their yeah. bench. And there she lines, is. There's right? Tori Lights. Look out. She'll skate by yeah, everybody. Exactly. There she goes to speed. Look at her. Turn it on. What a kick save by Abby Ull, the best save of the game and right also, there on Tory Lights. Brooke Yabruti right there for the rebound yeah. to clear it away. I mean, she used every bit of pad to get to that shot by Tory Lights, who was brilliant, flashing that speed again to go by everybody. But, John, you got to figure they're going to have a fast team. They play on such a big sheet. Oh, I guess they're gonna so. They're going to want that kind of speed yeah. on their team. Yeah, it looked like the Pyeongchang speed skating trials right there. Uh, oh, 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 no. Oh. She turned around and nailed her with a stick. That is something you don't ordinarily see in girls' My ice hockey. My goodness. And that is going to be at least five minutes for Annalise Reed. Maybe a game misconduct. I think it should be a game misconduct, don't you? That's awful. That was awful. The frustration level there to do that. I don't know what triggered it. Obviously, she got triggered. Annalise is going to the box, but they're talking over. They're talking over game misconduct. I think she should get one. And that's tough she to clearly, say because she, it's going to put the, that's BG the equivalent down to eight players. Of, that's the hockey equi equivalent of throwing a punch without, you know. Absolutely. It really is. It's actually worse than throwing a punch. I think it is. You could do a lot of harm with that stick, but she is stick. not getting the game misconduct, or, or is she? We'll find out. I mean... If an NHL player did that, and I'll tell you what, I mean, if she's if she's eject and she is going to be ejected because someone else is going to serve the penalty, that means she's gone. If I'm not mistaken, that's rough. They're going down to eight players, and she was a player. Well, she's not moving. Five minutes penalty. She's, she's not moving. I think she's being reluctant, but I think she's. I know she's getting the bad news now. I think. Well, she's not going anywhere. Well, maybe because the period's about to end, they're just going to send her off. She's got to leave the ice, John. Well, she's definitely leaving the ice. You're talking about the building. Well, she doesn't have to leave the building. She's got to leave the ice. 
Well, she's behind the boards. You mean behind? You mean leave behind the boards over there? Well, she's the, the bench, team area. The team area. She's, she's got to leave it. Yeah. Five-minute power play for Portsmouth Oyster River. But, but evidently not because they don't. They're not making it. And BG ah! able to clear. It could be a breakout here. Nice move, Brianna DeFelice trying to go it alone, but can't outskate the Bobcat defenders. Down ice they come in front. Backhander knocked away. Yeah, holy your Broody again. Getting rid of the rebound, the save, and getting rid of the rebound. Maybe she's only got the five-minute major. The, I don't know. I thought that they pointed to a player on the team yeah. to serve the penalty for her, but maybe not. The buzzer cannot come fast enough for BG to interrupt this five-minute major. There's less than a minute to go in the period. Deflected shot. Almost a deflected by Abby Ull, but went by the goal instead as Portsmouth Oyster River continues to keep the pressure on. The wrister, save, loose puck off the side of the net. That shot taken by Anna Maza, number 23. High on the body, save made by Abby Uhl, trying to track the puck. She makes another one and clamps down, face off to her left. Abby Uhl holding the fort here on a five on four, five minute advantage for the Bobcats. It's gonna get interrupted by the end of the period, 28 seconds from now. And you're down three nothing, you've gotta start the next period yeah. with three minutes for the other team on a power play. Puck goes back to the point. Loose puck in front, Abby Ewell able to cover up nice and freeze job. it. Boy, who is yeah, under siege. 29 saves at this point in two periods. Three shots have gotten them by her, and they've been pretty good quality shots. One was a chip shot by Ali Marshall to start the scoring. Tori Leitz with a breakaway goal, and then Marshall again with a wrister on a two-on-none effectively. Three seconds left, and they'll get out of this by not allowing a goal before the buzzer. But they'll be shorthanded for three, three minutes Three solid exactly minutes, yeah, three minutes exactly. When they exactly. come back and they're down, threes are wild, they're down three nothing. Oyster River Porson with the lead over Bishop Girton. We will be back with, and I'll be back too. <laughs> I won't be leaving you this time. Third with period third action. Third period action right after this. The New Hampshire Interscholastic Athletic Association presents the Life of an Athlete program. Hi, I'm Morgan Andrews. I play at the University of Notre Dame, and I believe in the importance of hydration, rest, and nutrition. I'm Kevin Nolan from Nashua, New Hampshire. I play for the New Hampshire Fisher Cats. Um, I learned right away, yeah, you gotta get your rest. Water is the best thing that you can put in your body. Nutrition is important because you're fueling your body, and your body is what gets you through the day. It's what get you, gets you through a game. Learn more at LOANH.org. Welcome back, everybody, to Skate 3 Arena in Tingsboro. Third period about to begin. Portsmouth Oyster River Bobcats leading the Bishop Girton Cardinals 3 to nothing in this single elimination playoff game. As the crowd starts to whoop it up a little bit, BG down three will be facing a steep uphill climb to get back into this game. Beginning with the fact they're down three to nothing, but Secondarily, for three minutes to begin this third period, they will be shorthanded thanks to the five-minute high-sticking major against Annalise Reed, their sophomore defenseman from Pelham with a, no other way to describe it, vicious roundhouse stick hack at the head of an opponent for Portsmouth Oyster River. And uh, she was uh, fortunate not to be ejected from the game. She was not. Five minute major, that's it. Shocking. So the Bobcats starting off the third period with a three minute power play. The remaining three minutes. Abby Ewell holds the short side, saving that shot by Tori Leibel. Bobcats keep it in. They've had the puck in the BG zone for most of the game. Long length, uh, rink length shot on net. Sally Squires with the easy save. And here come the Bobcats again. Just under two minutes to go on their power play. Deep into the corner. Cross-ice pass back to the point. 
Number 11 for Oyster River Portsmouth is Allie Marshall, who's looking for a hat trick. If she scores again, she will have three goals in this playoff game. The winner of this will face Exeter on Tuesday night. Uh, and you've got Tuesday night at you, Plymouth State. It's Oyster, a neutral site game. If Oyster River wins this game, you've got two schools that are about, I don't know, you know 20 minutes, 15 minutes from each other. Oh, good point. And they've got to drive all the, the way, way up to Plymouth. Plymouth. That's right. Ah, ah. <laughs> oh. Amazing. Yeah, they that's really, how it works out. You know, I mean, you've got Hanover who's always in there, so I guess, you know, that's... You're Fair to have, them that they have to go to Plymouth State. You no, know, they they have to go there. So I I would if I would Plymouth State's got a nice arena and it's a good venue. I mean it's a new arena. Yeah. And it's a good venue, I guess. But if I were the state, I would I, I'd try to stay with Everett Arena if you could because it's it's just more centrally located. Brooke Yabruti with good hustle to break it's, up that scoring try by Tori Libel for Oyster River. Here's Portia. a shot right here. It's going to be right Hull on. Hull saves net. two of them yep. and hangs on. Uh, what Hull did there was she basically caught. Oh, some ex that's got to be penalized. Go. That's extra. Yep. That's got to be uh, two minutes. For you Holt? Can't, you can't throw three more. No, it's got to be oh, on. For Oyster River. Yeah. I don't, was, I don't see how you let that go. It's just extra. You know what I mean? And they are. Yeah, they're going to let it go. That's not good. I mean, you get three left-handed shots in, uncontested. Yeah. That's got to be penalized. Mistake by the officials there. Let that one the go. Second mistake by the officials. Yeah. Ooh. Ball go, puck goes trickling One through everybody. That just missed. Just missed a stick. Chance for Emma Wallet. Couldn't poke it past the defender. She could have been in alone. All right, John. For you, a shorthanded chance. You're missing two skaters, and one of them who, who, who would take that puck and go break away with it and kill it. Pearson you know, and kill him, if too. Her knee, if her knee was okay. Yeah. Round the boards it goes, but not out. The penalty is now up. It's five on five as uh, Reed comes out of the box. Actually, Tom... Uh, Michaela Maney came out of the box, and it looks like Reed is still standing in the penalty area. So I don't know what that means. Game misconduct, five-minute major. Oh, she ten got a game misconduct? So she probably got a ten-minute game misconduct, but no ejection. It's the only thing I can think of, John. Okay. She's still there. That's her. She's the still box, there. Right? Yeah. Even though the penalty is up, uh, yeah. the one that has to kill. So but she's got to be out for ten minutes, no matter what. But the penalty is only five minutes. You don't get a ten-minute penalty on a game this time. You just lose the play. Okay, for ten minutes, yeah. but not the whole game, then. Well, uh, you know, I mean, you can lose her for the whole game if the referee deems it. If it's more than ten, but it's it's so my by my math, with eight minutes left to go in this period, she'll probably be eligible to play again. Right. If, if it's were, a ten-minute misconduct, and I'm not going to try to to coach for the for the coach, but if I'm Scott Cizik, I wouldn't put it back in the game. No, make that it's a 15-minute period, so eight minutes into the period, seven She'd minutes left in the period should right. be eligible. But play. I would I would put it back in, but he probably will because he needs the skaters. You know, he's down. Yeah. So a change, a line change for. Portsmouth Oyster River. I don't know if I saw any BG players change up. They don't have too many options now, down to eight skaters. They need five at all times on the ice. Unless there's a penalty. Oh, watch out here. Abby Uhl just anticipated that nicely yes, and made did. the save point blank. Yeah, you're right, John. Great call, John, by you and the fact that she anticipated the play because that's exactly what she did. Anna Mazza was right there for the shot. BG nearly with a two on one, not able to make it happen. Pass on up ahead. They're just not able to connect for that great scoring chance. Down three to nothing. And if it was not for Abby Uhl, they'd be down seven or eight to nothing in this game. There's a rare icing call against the Bobcats. So we face off to the left of Sally Squires. Ten minutes and 51 seconds left to and go. Sally Squires is the loneliest person. Yeah. I'm usually pretty lonely, but I mean, Sally Squires is even more lonely than I am. Though. Sally Squire, there's no S on the end of it. Squire, yep. Yeah. We have a timeout. 
may be taken by Bishop Girton. Well, you, you would, I don't know. You know, would you use it now? You probably would use it as soon as you feel your team is gassed a little bit. They've got a face-off in the offensive zone, so he's probably going to try to set up a play. You may see the whiteboard out, and, they, and you do. There's the whiteboard. Yeah. Because... Trying to devise his well, plan you know, to get a goal. Well, that's just it. You get on the board, and then maybe something happens, you know? Yeah. Maybe you get a little momentum here. With 10.51 to play, you're down three goals. In girls hockey, a lot of things happen. We've seen it. You and I have done a few of these yeah. games. But, you I know? mean, you pointed out the, the number one problem that BG faces right now is that they're down to eight skaters with that misconduct to Annalise Reed and... Uh, David Krejci is not going to skate through those boards for Bishop Girton right now. They no, and if, uh, if he did, we'd have a pretty good story. <laughs> <we? laughs> yeah, we would. So uh, one of their best players out with a but reported when he comes, knee injury. But when he does do that, he won't be <laughs> older Greg because he's still fairly young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> the, to finish the Rick Pitino quote. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Ten fifty-one to play in this hockey game. We've got a timeout on the ice. It's three nothing in favor of the Oyster River Portsmouth Co-op team. If they win this, they would play Exeter in the semis. Yeah, as uh, we remarked, that's their bonus prize. They get to go after school on Tuesday. How many miles is that roughly? Sixty. From Exeter, you can take four up to Concord, right? Yeah. You can go right from there to so. Plymouth. Yeah. yeah. It's about uh, 45 minutes, I think, to Plymouth from Concord, maybe less than that. All right. You know, it's not too bad. Maybe yeah. Anywhere. So, anyway, and to play a team, Exeter, that's waiting in the wings because they beat Concord today earlier in this same round, playoff round, 6 to nothing. Impressive win for Exeter. Back to get it first, I the see. foot race, Allie oh, Marshall. Rolly pup, dangerous play there. Yeah, Allie Marshall looking for the hat trick, number 11 for the Bobcats. BG did not get a chance to even get that play underway. And Marshall's shot, blocker save, save by 33 Abby stops Uhl. That goes into the bench. As we said before, in uh, the NHL, that's a two-minute delay of game penalty, and not so in high school hockey. I BG, I delay as much as I can. Yeah, Give exactly, keep rest. doing it. Keep doing it. Are you allowed to do the Jerry Cheevers play in high school, which is like you put you, you throw the ball up and you bat it into the stands? Yeah, I don't, I don't, he used I to do that me. all the time. It was so funny. We actually used to do it in high, uh, street hockey. The goalie would take the, the round Milek ball and bat Watch it. Watch out. we got a break here. Two on one, possibly. Well, they had lights was open for the centering pass. It never, they never passed it. Here comes Holt. With some speed. Lindsay Holt has an open ice area down the right side. She's going to take advantage. A wrister goes high over everything off the far corner glass. Brianna DeFelice trying to hold it in at the point. Cannot. Oyster River with it. Look out. The dangerous Tori Leitz, number 16. Holt's going to give it her all for 9.35. Here's a nice pass. Trying to push it on ahead was Allison Pollard. Number three in the roster, 13, though, on the ice. Ah, we found that out. All right. She was introduced uh, in the starting lineup. Here's a breakaway break all alone. Allie Marshall, save is made. Denying her the hat trick there. Abby Uhl with another number great save. Number 34. We keep piling up. All alone in front. Right there. Oh, on an open net. Could Anna not Mazza, the centering pass. Right there. Two Ray players whiff on it. Loose puck still. All right, John, it should be 6 nothing. Yeah, oh, it should be. It really should. Those are two open nets, and they had another yeah. one earlier. The uh, Oyster River fans can kind of laugh at it that their players whiffed you know on what? a couple the of thing shots. Is it, 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 if Gurdon could just get a little bit of adrenaline, oh, they'd make him pay for some of that. I mean, 3 nothing in a oh. playoff game doesn't sound like a lot, but in this game, truthfully, it's a commanding lead, the way Oyster River Portsmouth has been dominating the play. And the lack of shots on goal for BG. Let's see if that can change. Trying to get the puck out of their own end, first of all. Yana DeFelice passed it on up toward Allie McMahon. Trying to get down there and put some pressure on Molly Blast, number 15, pursuing the puck. Around the boards it goes. Julia Ravenel gets it on ahead. One of the BG players falls uh, down. One. Up ahead, Anna Mazza. Mazza shifts and... Score yep. on the trailer. 
Five. Laura Drehe. Laura yep. Drehe, D-R-E-H-E, with the fourth goal of the game for Portsmouth Oyster River. Just about the halfway mark in the period. With 7.56 remaining in the game, Portsmouth Oyster River leads it 4 to nothing. Abby Uhl, no justice. She made a terrific save on Anna Mazza, but the trailer unchecked. Laura Drahey with an easy poke in for the game's fourth goal. Well, it's the second breakaway in about 45 seconds that they had, and they took advantage of this one. Great play to trail that and keep moving. Yeah. On the play and be there for the rebound because it was sitting there, John, for a while. Yeah. You Ideally, know? your defenseman gets to that first and clears it away. Yeah, your Brody couldn't catch up, and that's part of the problem with the lack of skaters. You just don't have the stamina to make that trip all the way down. Bingo. Yep. You know, energized team, defense gets to that puck first after the great Abby will save, clears it away, no goal. Instead, it's four to nothing. Portsmouth Oyster River and BG desperately just trying to get on the scoreboard at this point. Emma Wallet, nice move, shot. Oh, wide of the goal. Might have been deflected wide. And again, Portsmouth Oyster River showing enough stamina to get back and intercept Emma Wallet before she could get a really good quality shot away. Centering pass, intercepted. Libel throws it out of the zone. Back to get it. Halt. Lindsay Halt circling. Halt. Try to connect. It's going to be icing instead. That was Sally Pollard at the blue line. Just couldn't reach it. Seven minutes even. Let's see. I said that that would be the ten-minute misconduct mark for Allie Reed, and you know what? She's not moving from that spot. I guess she's just accepting her punishment. There's some talk. And watching her team yeah, play. And I guess so. It's got to be tough to just watch. Go! Oh! Chip shot. It was a deflected shot. I think it went off the stick. Julie uh, Ravenel uh, shot Allie McMahon, it. and Ravenel will get the goal. I think it went off a of BG stick, Tom, and it yep. just became airborne to the point where Abby Ewell didn't get a good look at it because she's got a pretty good catching glove but did not get a good look at that puck as it went winging right past her. 5-0. That was with 6.53 remaining in the third period. Allie Marshall with two goals and two assists now. She got an assist on that goal by Ravenel. Marshall's first to get this puck behind the net. Centering pass. Knocked away by Brooke Yabruti. All the way back to the Portsmouth zone. Team's trading possession between the blue lines. Now look out. It's Lights with it looking for her second goal. Circling the net, trying to center it. Lindsay Hult does a good job of taking the puck away from Lights. Centering pass right on the tape. Here comes Molly Blast. Blast wrists one wide to the right. Behind the net, in front. Knocked away by Squires. Around the boards it goes. And Portsmouth Oyster River minimizing the pressure in their defensive zone able to get it out and so one on three break here for Patty Anderson but she makes it work centering pass goes all the way outside the blue line as the Bobcats were in the midst of a line change bearing in on the net out in front just muscling it out in front was the uh, number 15 for Oyster River who we do not have on our roster unfortunately backhander saved by Abby Uhl. 4.58 to go in the hockey game, and in like all likelihood, Bishop Girton's season down 5 nothing. number of names we have not mentioned yet for Oyster River Portsmouth. Well, it's, a, it's a pretty lengthy roster for them. It is. It seemed like close to 20 players. 
Puck is iced, and we're going to have a face-off again in the BG zone to the right of Abby Ewell, 5 nothing. Well, the team that awaits Exeter defeated Concord 6 to nothing in girls' high school hockey, New Hampshire Division I, earlier today. And barring a BG goal, it looks like that uh, Bobcats could be on pace for the same 6-0 score. They're There's not. a save by Abby Ewell, and it's only because of Abby Ewell that I'll just say that maybe she'll let up another goal before this one's over. Rister knocked down out of midair by Ali Marshall. Marshall and Tori Lights, very similar in, I, I want to say, appearance because they're both very strong skaters. They both look to be about 5'8". <laughs> look at Halt. 5'9". Halt is the best player on the ice for BG, trying to do it all by herself right here. I'd like here. to see her and Lights in a race, wouldn't you? Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, full strength, sure. Yeah, full strength. That'd and be instead, great. Allie Marshall looking for her fourth goal. Or for the hat trick. Or for yeah. hat trick. She she needs her, she has two goals and two assists. And nice save again by Abby Ewell. Round the behind the net it goes. Rister. 37 now for her. Wow. And Squire, has she been shot at? She's been shot at a few times, right? Maybe five? Uh, it's, it's a handful, if five that. Times, yeah, right? I'll say. Brooke Broody makes a nice play, stepping up. Now inside the blue line, trying to hold on to it. Brooke DeFelice, back to you, Broody. Bobcats intercept and clear. That could be icing. And they will call it. 3-0-4 to play. 5 nothing game. I think it was, you asked me who the player was, Tom, that got recipient of that headhunter slash by Annie Reed. I think it was number 20, um, Morgan Kahn. Not 100% sure on that, though. And I don't know what precipitated that, but that was just an angry slash that really stood out because you don't, you don't see that in boys' hockey, but you certainly don't see it in girls' hockey very often. <laughs> just, exactly. Where you know there's no even checking allowed. One of the players that hasn't gotten a lot of ice time that's hustling all the way, number one for the Bobcats, Kate Schultz, making the most of her ice time. That's yeah, a luxury for the Bobcats. There's some players that haven't even seen ice time yet. That's just it. Jamie Wong can empty the bench right now. Game's in hand, and he's gonna go up to Plymouth State. Five-nothing lead with 240 to go. Lindsay Holt off the board. Much different than the 6-5 game on a bigger sheet of ice at the Whittemore Center. So that tells you something right there. That tells you how short-handed BG is today. Right. Just did not, you know, knew, knew going in there we're going to be you know, up against it. And I think that mentality, John, carries over. Once you fall behind, that does it. You know, that, that mentality will do it to you. And with some new players on the ice for Portsmouth Oyster River, BG with their best offensive sequence in a while. Molly Blast got a quality wrist shot on goal that was saved by Squire. And she's getting congratulated on that save by her teammates. Squire 40, will be a lot less lonely in her next game. 43 to 7 in shots. Right yeah. Now. Oh, she'll be, yeah, she'll she'll be tested. No question about it. That wrister finds its way through. Right pad save by Squire on the shot from the point by Lindsay Halt. In front, puck fought for. Brooke DeFelice had her stick held for a second. See, this is Girton's number one unit against Oyster River's number four unit, basically. So that's what you got out there. Yep, in front it goes. Tough one for the Cardinals. They had a good year. They won 13 games. They did? You know, against they only really, five losses. Yeah, they really had a good year. It was a work. Goal. There's a goal right there. And it might have been Brooke T. Felice, number eight, that will get credited with it. Also in there was Brooke Yabruti. And the centering pass, I believe, was made by Molly Blass. So it may be 
It may be. We'll wait till Pete. Yes. Uh, DeFelice from last. It. He will do so fairly quickly, I'm sure. But that goal coming too little, too late for the Cardinals. A 5-1 game now with a minute and a half left. Well, I guess he's not going to announce it. Well, we'll say DeFelice from blast. With 133 remaining in the period. Blast in the corner. Centering pass goes right through the crease. Oh, he will. He's got his microphone. Okay. Oh, he's not a break, John. The breakaway. Nice play. Pumped away Halt. from Anna Mazza by Hall. Great hustle. Emma Wallet with the centering pass, not blast, they said. So at 1437. 1337. 1337, thanks. 15-minute period. Rister pops up in the air, the glove save off the shot by DeFelice. Less than half a minute remaining. Hulk keeps it in. And now skated out. Oh, here we go. And another break. Patty point. Anderson all by herself. Oh, Looks like, like the shootout. shootout. Go. Go. Patty Anderson with 16 seconds remaining makes it a 6 to 1 game. So, six goals for the other semifinalist, Exeter over Concord. Six goals for their opponents on Tuesday night, the Oyster River Portsmouth Bobcats. And Abby Ewell with over 40 saves in this one. As we'll take the final faceoff here with 16 seconds remaining. Want to congratulate the Bishop Girton Cardinals girls ice hockey team for a terrific season and providing us with several exciting games here on Nashua ETV. They'll finish with a record. Uh, I was rep. Oh, they gave it to Julia Ravenel, not number 12. Julia Ravenel with the final goal for. Portsmouth Oyster River. For Tom King and our cameraman Tim O'Neill and our executive producer Pete Johnson, thanking you for watching the final score for the final time in this quarterfinal round playoff game. It is Oyster River Portsmouth 6 and Bishop Girton 1. Portsmouth Oyster River advances to play Exeter in the semifinal. Good night from Skate 3 in Tingsboro, everybody.